Hi, welcome to a uh, brief tour of the new Dorset Museum. So many of you will be familiar with this. This is the historic entrance to the museum and this will be remaining the new entrance to the museum. But one thing that is completely different is there are no steps at all now within the building. So mobility issues and wheelchairs are completely catered for for the very first time. We've also opened up the corridor, putting through two new entrances. Uh, one takes us through into what is the new cafe, but most people will be going to the left as they come in into our new shop and welcome area. So this is the new welcome reception. This area here that you're looking at now, this is where the shop will be, the gift shop, uh, cards and local products. And just here, and this is important for many of you who are our volunteers in our visitor services team, this is where the new welcome reception desk is going to be. Walking a bit further on, this space, which a lot of you will be familiar with as the old tea room, is the new multifunction room. It's going to function as a classroom, as a temporary exhibition space. Um, as a meeting room and a boardroom for the society. So that's becoming a much more usable space than it was. Uh, now, now that is no longer the tea room, I'll take you through into what is the new cafe, which many of you will remember as the library. And so this area has been completely opened out and this will be a 50 seat restaurant serving local produce, uh, local drinks, local food. Maybe some of you would like to look in the kitchen while we're here. So this area, which used to be the toilets for those of you who remember the museum, is the new kitchen. Uh, this very, very shortly will be completely kitted out with all the latest state-of-the-art equipment. And it's been located in such a position so it can serve both the cafe that we've just come through, but also through this new doorway that we've put in, it can serve events in the Victorian Hall and functions and those sorts of activities far more easily than we ever did before, because through there, there is the Victorian Hall. And now I'm going to take you upstairs to what's going to be the new members library. So now we're in what will be the new members library. Uh, this was, some of you will remember the Jurassic Coast Gallery. But it's now been completely refurbished. New heating, new lighting, uh, <coughs> new, um, new double glazing, but most importantly revealing some of the historic features in the building. So that beautiful uh, fireplace that's in here the lovely turret corner, all of these features have been restored and this is just now waiting with the, the floor newly finished and polished ready for the installation of the library racking which will begin later this month. So I've come back downstairs now in the historic building going through into the new atrium which is at the heart of the extension of the new Tomorrow's Museum for Dorset project. So the atrium is the, new, is the heart of the new building and it's from here that all the, the galleries can be accessed through level access through the central lift column which serves the basement, the first, second and third floors. Uh, but also from this level there's some in, important features that we've uh, built into the project to make the, the building more accessible and in, available to the community than ever before. So on the ground floor there's a changing places toilet which is a special type of disabled toilet for those people with complex care needs. And on the second floor, there's a calm room for families with children or members of the groups with autism, where if they're overstimulated, they can go and have a restful five minutes and calm down a little bit if they need that in their visit. There's also in, in within the atrium disabled toilets on every level. So you're never very far from a loo in the new museum. That was one of the most important things that came through uh, in terms of the visitor consultation about the old building. So on this wall here, this is where the Fordington mosaic is going to be relocated. Many people will remember that mosaic from being on the ground in the old Braun extension of the 1970s. Uh, the mosaic which depicts Neptune surrounded by serpents was found in 1927 and is currently being conserved by Cliveden Conservation, ready for its installation here later this year. So now I'm coming down the stairs into the basement, which is the new Dorset Museum Collection Centre. One of the great things we've tried to design into this is public accessibility into the collection centre. So I'm standing in what will be the viewing window into the new uh, heart of the collection centre. So the public will be able to come down into this little atrium space, into this little vestibule and see into uh, the museum, see behind the scenes at some of the stored collections and some of the work that we do. In the space itself, 
we've already now got installed all the rails in the floor that are for the roller racking system, the electric roller racking system, that's going to allow us to bring the collections that have previously been scattered in uh, a variety of properties around Dorchester into this one space, a space that's completely condition controlled to be the right temperature and the right humidity for the collections that we're storing. That area over there is largely costume, textiles and geology. This area in the centre is where the bulk of the archaeology will be. This area over here is for sculpture, for um, social history and for uh, some elements of fine art. This part in the corner, uh, this is what are going to be a hot desking area for the volunteer collections managers. And the whole area itself is about 500 square metres. So that is a, a pretty vast space, as they all condition controlled. This last little bit of the, the basement store, this is a new conservation studio where we can do either all sorts of conservation activities involving a variety of our collections. Uh, it can be divided into what I, I broadly call uh, clean and dry and wet and dirty and we can do that with a concert the concertina that's fitted up the middle or it can be one open space. Again this area through big glass windows is viewable by the public when they visit the museum. So we've come back upstairs and we're now back on the ground floor and I'm just going into what will be the new Natural Dorset Gallery. Just to give you an idea of some sort of scale this gallery is 24 metres by 16 metres, which is twice the size of our old temporary exhibition gallery. These are big spaces, as I'm hoping you can appreciate uh, from seeing them before we start putting anything in. In the Natural Dorset Gallery, we're going to be looking at the geology, uh, the geomorphology and the natural history of the county. We're able to get out some of our collections that have never been able to be displayed before, uh, collections of vertebrate and invertebrate zoology, uh, taxidermy collections, a whole range of items that in the old museum there wasn't the conditions or, store or display space able to do that. I'm now walking through into what will be the new temporary exhibition gallery. This is a gallery that meets the strict government indemnity standard uh, scheme for being able to borrow exhibitions. So it is in effect a plain white secure box. This is intensely environmentally controlled and we can, get, we can control the environment in here with the mechanical and electrical systems incredibly finely, depending on what exhibitions we can bring in. But it means in effect that we will no longer be prevented from borrowing objects and borrowing touring exhibitions by the building, which was a problem we used to have in the past with the old site where we couldn't get this security and environmental control. In terms of scale, Again, it's quite difficult to get scale at the moment with nothing in it, but this is the same size as the old temporary exhibition gallery that you might remember from the old museum. Just going to my left now, this bit really still is a building site, but you can see over there John White's rectory. <clears throat> this area will be the new learning centre for, for schools and lifelong learners and society activities. There's going to be a link building that joins the back of the new extension into John White's building. And this can be a self-contained area where classes can come. There's going to be a kitchenette within it. There's toilets within it. So it don't have to share facilities with all the ordinary visitors. Uh, so there's less pressure on the infrastructure than there was before. And this area, just where I've come now, right where the crane is at the moment, this area is going to be our new sculpture garden where people can come and take a break, sit outside from their visit in the museum uh, and also where we'll be displaying two of the larger pieces that have been recently gifted to us from the estate of Elizabeth Frink. So heading back into the new building, I'm just going to take you down what will be the service corridor. Those of you who uh, volunteered at the museum or ever helped us put together exhibitions will remember we didn't really have anywhere to prepare things that was not on public display. So this area is very much going to be behind the scenes. So we've got our new quarantine store. We've got a new freezer room for, for conditioning uh, things when they need to come in the museum and be put in the deep freeze. We've got various storage rooms, but also we've got a nice wide uh, case store for showcases so we don't have to cart them up and down Carlton Street like we used to, but also getting carts in and out, getting um, crates in and out is, will be much easier. Again, all these sort of spaces have been designed with some of the largest packing crates in mind. So actually we looked at 
what packing crates we get when we bring in temporary exhibitions, exhibitions like Pharaoh King of Egypt or uh, Dippy on Tour, the sort of packing crates we need to bring in and out of the museum. And that corridor is designed to take them, as is this soft spot within the wall. So anything we might be bringing into the Victorian Hall, which for those of you who are wondering is still through that door there, can come in through that, that crate hole in the wall. So now I've come up to the first floor, uh, which is where the ceremony we just had with uh, Lord Fellows topping the building out is taking place. But before we go into that gallery, I'm just going to first of all go through into the new Hardy's Dorset Gallery, which is the refurbished gallery that used to be a writer's Dorset. So the first thing you'll have noticed is you actually access this space from the new atrium. Completely level, no steps or ramps, which used to be a barrier to access for visitors uh, into the old writer's Dorset Gallery. Hardy's study itself is still in exactly the same position. It's currently being restored, bit of redecorating, but that will go back largely as people know it and love it when the museum reopens. What will be new in here are the new displays in the central area looking at Hardy's life, his influences, his writing, um, and the broader context of Dorset at the time he was working. There's also in this, air, this set of galleries a new reading room, a family reading room that's been sponsored by the Fine Foundation. And in here there's going to be a, a range of resources to try and engage young people with reading and writing and literacy in a wide variety of ways that they might not necessarily get uh, either at school or at home, but things that we as a museum are uniquely positioned to provide. All this building's been restored, again, because this is a historic building, some features that have been covered up rather unsympathetically by previous exhibitions and interventions in the building have been revealed. Beautiful fireplace in here, for example. All of the panel work from the, the house at Tynham in the reading room we've just been in has been restored. And back in this section, the roof area has all been restored. All the bits of uh, leaks that we used to have when the wind blew in different directions have all been dealt with, all been redecorated, all been rewired, new heating, um, new decoration throughout. So just coming back out into the atrium on the balcony at first floor level, uh, this little spot here is going to be the prime viewing spot for the Fordington Mosaic. There's actually going to be an interactive here uh, with a video telling you about the history of its conservation, its restoration and its original discovery. And this is going to be, you're going to be able to get almost, this is at the eye line of the Neptune element of the mosaic. So I'm going now into the People's Dorset Gallery. So this is the main gallery, the largest gallery in the new museum. And this deals with the social history and the archeology span of Dorset across a period spanning the Neolithic through to the present day. So it's a really all encompassing gallery about human life and human activity and human imprint on the county and how it's been shaped by people and how people have shaped it. To give you a sense of scale, in this packing crate here is the hay cart from Yetminster, which I'm sure many people who visited the museum will remember was in the old uh, stable block. So you can see within this space how small this object is. It gives you an idea of sense of space. Uh, in this crate here, it's the painting of the Bond family of, Ty of Creech Grange that used to be on display uh, in the old stairwell. So again, you can see what a very big, pic very big work of art that was and get a sense of how sizable this gallery is. This area is going to be where we talk about the real prehistory of Dorset, the Neolithic, the Paleolithic archaeology, but also so where some of our great uh, Bronze Age and Iron Age treasures are going to be displayed and things like the Chickrell neck rings and the Clandon Barrow finery. Going through and round chronologically, we then deal with the Iron Age. So this area here is where some of our important finds from Mortimer Wheeler's excavations at Maiden Castle, the human remains from Maiden Castle are going to be displayed through into this area, which is going to be about Roman Dorset. 
We then go through, as you'd expect, this area here, we're looking more then at families and people because as we leave that Roman period and enter the medieval and early modern periods, we actually begin to be able to talk about specific people and what their contribution was. And this is looking at some of those great families and great dynasties of the county. Before that area over there looks at more of the economic and social history from the 18th century up to the present day. Some of the most important uh, uh, trades and industries of the county, the impact that the railways and tourism have had on Dorset, and some of the exciting things that you might not associate with the county. Things like the nuclear programme that was carried out at Winfrith, or exciting inventions that were done by Plessy Telecommunication at Halton Heath. So now I've come up to the third floor, where I'm just going into the Artist Dorset Gallery. This is a new purpose-designed, conditioned art gallery, and in it, it's split into a number of zones. Over this side is going to be the, this part of the, the museum that's dedicated to sculpture and the display of our sculpture collection, uh, things from, mainly now, from the collection of 28 sculptures that have been given to the Society by the estate of Elizabeth Frink as a result of this project, but also things by Mary Spencer Watson and other notable uh, Dorset sculptors. On the left side of the gallery as you come in, this is where our core canvas, oil on canvas painting collection, portraits and landscapes will be displayed, Dorset artists, Dorset scenes and Dorset people, and this area will be a permanent display over and over to our art collection for the first time in the museum's history. And then there's a couple of special areas that are particularly designed to be dark because this is where the sensitive, really light sensitive materials are going to be stored and displayed. So this area here is, will be our prints and watercolours room. As you can see, we need to get that less than 50 lux to be able to display things. So you can, at the minute, get it pretty dark as you can see. And so between these two columns here, this is going to be other specialist space, a specially controlled showcase in terms of environment and light levels for our costume and textile collections, meaning that we're going to be able to bring those out for the very first time. And really, that's what the whole project has been about. We've had four, we've got four million objects in our collection and we've always been able to just to display such a very, very small fraction. And so be creating a new facility has all been about bringing those collections out on display and that's the part I'm really excited about and that's the, what's going to make it all worthwhile. So thank you for joining us on this tour today. I hope you've enjoyed this look round behind the scenes on the building site and we hope to see you very soon when the new building's fitted out.